Listen up or run for cover. Dropping knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the, the real Robin Bradley Bombs. is dropping. What it is, Bradley, back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs today folks you're in for a real treat because i got somebody here that i think can bring a lot of value to most people's life if not every single person the reason why i say it almost because you know there's always somebody out there just killing it well i think if you're killing it to the top of your game you know you probably have 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 implemented some of the things this dude teaches and for those of you that don't know this guy you're going to definitely want to follow him if you want to follow the guy make sure you follow him on instagram at nick long 365 that's the dude you want to follow or go check him out at own the next 90.com bomb squad welcome nick long thank you brad thank you man it's an honor to be here well what's happening oh man just excited man i love this office i love the vibe i love everything you represent and i'm always uh honored to come on anybody's podcast let alone this one yeah well i'll tell you we I don't know if people realize this, but we reach 7 billion people. We get 7 billion, billion downloads Downloads an episode. There's do, you apparently, up, do you put up your pinky like Dr. Evil when you say that? No, but apparently there's, you know, a couple people somewhere in like Somalia mm. that, that aren't hearing it. So if, if, if y'all can in the bomb squad, do me a favor, share it, tag it, rate it and review it. Make sure you're subscribed. So when new episodes drop, it automatically downloads and we'll push push it up to the top of the list in Somalia and well wherever people are because I need to reach every single person on earth that's, I'm like 16 people away that's the goal man if you guys could help me out that'd be great that's the goal you know so so Nick and I were talking earlier about you know some of our belief systems and a lot of them align and what I wanted to do is is kind of have you break down what you just talked about if you could do a just an exact repeat just, that would be freaking unbelievable. Yeah, man. So <clears throat> basically, a uh, little backstory on me. I'm 39 years old. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 22. So going on, what, 17 years now. And uh, like had total successes and failures. And some of the times where I've been the most financially secure, I've been what I call emotionally bankrupt. So I was trying to figure it all out. And then finally, I got married. I was like, okay, that's the answer. And then, you know, obviously had like any challenges that a marriage has and I became a father. Oh, that's the answer. Oh, and then on out of the money and like, so I couldn't put it all together. I was like, damn it. This is so fucking frustrating. Like how do you, how do, how does anybody win at life? And finally I met a man, his name is Garrett J. White. And he had a, a system called wake up warrior, the warrior's way. And it took everything that I had been doing stuff from Tony Robbins and from this guru and that guru, and it put it into a singular focus. And it actually pointed the mirror back at me and said, you are the guru. Like, you're the only guru you ever need in your own life. Yeah. People need to understand that. I keep trying to tell people, man, if you are if you ever want, I can introduce you to the dude that'll change you or the person that will literally change you and give you all your answers and make you successful. I can introduce them to you. Just, I say, all you have to do is go into the bathroom alone, look around, and you'll find them. Yeah. You're, they're, they're usually in there. Yeah. All you have to do is make sure the bathroom's empty and you're the only one in there and then just look around you'll see them right in the mirror you'll see the person yeah right in the mirror and it was like holy crap because i think so so for so many people myself included like we search for all this external validation and you know that's why we we want to see how many likes we're getting on instagram and this and that and like the only validation we need comes from ourself and so he was able to put this all into singular focus and say like dude, the reason why your life is not working is because you're one dimensional or two dimensional at best. And I'm like, well, what the fuck does that mean? He's like, well, you're probably good at making money and maybe your relationship's good, but you don't love yourself and you're, you're like, you're fat. And I'm like, hey, well, I'm, I'm pleasantly plump. Well, I'm not fat. He's like, no, dude, you're fucking fat. Like you probably weigh 30 pounds overweight, right? I'm like, yes. He's like, so that's not working. So you're one, you're one dimensional. You're not just a producer. You're also a father. You're also a husband. You're also you. You know, so you're focusing on one area. We don't see in one dimension, but yet oftentimes all these listeners, most of them are probably living in one to two dimensions at best. Yep. And so he's like, you got to focus on what I call the core four. 
And literally, it was so simple. It was stupid. And like, I'm going to talk about it right now. And some of these people are going to want to overcomplicate it because that's just how life is. Like we think that this person or that person got to where they are because, you know, they were lucky or this or that. And at the end of the day, it was their disciplines, their daily disciplines, like drove their actions and their actions drove the results and the results are what you see. The end. Like you are where you are right now. I don't care who you are as a result of your daily disciplines and the actions you take. The end. Like no one is coming to save you. Not a single person is coming to save you. True that. Yes. So like I started looking at it and he gave me a way to gamify. Gamify my life. And I was like, because as an entrepreneur, you can relate to this, Brad. Like if I'm like, hey, do this, this, and this, and it's going to result in what you want. Like you're going to go after it with everything you have, right? Yeah. yeah. And so he showed it to me. It's called the core four. And so what I say is we're, we're, we're not in a worn, torn country. Maybe some of you listening somewhere you are, and I'm sorry for that. But for the most part, we live in the modern world and we're not at war like, they, like we used per to be. Per se. Yeah, but we're at war. We're at the war in our mind. Like the talk track that we say to each other, like the, the things that we watch and, and fill our brain with, like we're literally filling our bodies with, with shit. And so when you go through this daily war, if you had like a war plan, right, a war map to go throughout it, you'd probably feel a lot better. Well, that's what the core four is. It's like you have to focus on your body. You have to focus on your being, which is your spirituality. You have to focus on, on your balance, which in, in this case simply means your relationships. And you have to make some money. Like people think money doesn't matter. And I'm telling you right now, it fucking matters. It doesn't make you happy, but it gives you a lot of options. One of the things I always say is like, even Mother Teresa, they're like, well, Mother Teresa didn't have money. I'm like, bullshit. She had the Catholic church. That's the greatest financial institution on the face of the planet. Yeah. And I'll tell you, the whole money doesn't make you happy is a cliche line. If I've ever heard one, like if I just handed you 30 million, would you be happy? I'd be happier than I am right now. Well, then money does buy happiness. And not only that, it's like people use that cliche because they're trying to console somebody that didn't have any, you know, money won't make you happy or someone was driven to and focused on money. And their answer to stop that person was, Hey, money's not going to make you happy. Right. Listen, money alone doesn't make you happy, but money sure the fuck does make you happy. (laughs) Okay. I've, I've, I've been broke and I've had money and I'm always fucking happy with money. Right. Like, why can't people just admit it? Money does buy happiness, folks. It doesn't mean that you'll be happy because you have money. You might have a bunch of money and still be unhappy. So it's not a loan. But let me tell you something. Money makes being unhappy way better. Well, it gives you options. Yeah. It gives you options like like you need money. Yeah. It makes 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 holidays better. Exactly. It makes relationships better. People say, well, if you're with the girl that just likes you for your money, dude, listen, money allows you to buy the things that your girl always wanted or your kids always wanted or your parents always wanted. Giving somebody something, I believe, you ever give somebody something that they really freaked out about that they could never afford themselves? It's the greatest gift ever. Yeah, and, and you feel better than buying yourself some shit. Yeah. Well, that's because that uh, act of giving is the highest form of, it's the highest expression for like love yep. in some cases yeah. that you can feel. So when you give somebody something, that makes you feel really good. Why? Because you did something for somebody else. Yeah, but isn't isn't that happiness? Absolutely. Okay, so money does well, buy so happiness. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll so I'll give you perspective. So six, seven years ago, couldn't put fucking gas and I was like like faking it till I make it type of thing I had been very very successful but because I didn't love myself ultimately like I said people took advantage of me but the reality was I allowed them to take advantage of you me didn't, you, subconsciously or consciously you felt you weren't worth it worth it yeah so I gave it all away it was like gripping onto sand man the, I mean millions and millions of dollars so here we are I'm, I get back together with my with my estranged girlfriend who now is my became my fiance and is my wife so driving a Range Rover you know on the outside looking in everybody thinks that Nick's Long's got it all figured out right did you say Nick's Schlong <laughs> I said Nick Long oh. it's long and skinny by the way it's like a linguine noodle uh but uh anyway so we're we're uh I'm in Guatemala like I'm in the I, I do a lot of in the call center business so I'm living in Guatemala she's here we got this condo I got a Range Rover couldn't even fucking put gas in the car. I had $14 in my bank account. I was expecting two big wires to come in from customers that, of course, didn't come in. She calls me and she's fucking crying. 
she's crying. She's like, I don't want this. I didn't sign up for this. You know, like you told me it was going to be different. And I'm like, shit. And I'm, I'm thousands of miles away. Yeah, but you sure it was that? It might have been the skinny wiener. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, she, <laughs> she, uh, she, she has no choice with that. Like, she's like, help the things you can and not the things you can't. Like, I've accepted this. Just fix, so, the, fix so, the gas. So what was she? What was her? What was she saying? I didn't sign up for this. Having no gas. Well, just like so, I, I, I told her like, cause I went through this whole metamorphosis and I had this epiphany and I was gonna shift my life and things were gonna change and, but I was still living a lie. Like I was lying to my fucking self. I was lying to her. I was lying to everybody. And so we had like $14 in the bank account. She's like, I don't want any of this. And so at that moment, that moment, I felt enough fucking pain where I'm like, never again. Like, and I told her, I was like, mark my fucking word. We'll never have this conversation again. You will never be in want of anything financially, emotionally. Like I will, like, I'll do whatever it fucking takes. And she's like, you know, show me, don't tell me. So now fast forward, and this is a whole closing the loop on the money conversation. We just spent 10 days in Europe. 10 days in Europe, we're driving these vintage cars. It was a vintage car rally, like driving these fucking crazy Porsches and Jaguars. And we started in the Swiss Alps and we drove all the way down through the Swiss Alps into Tuscany, Lake Como, into the vineyards. We're staying at these chalets. And obviously this wasn't a fucking cheap trip, right? We're driving through the 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 the, the uh, vineyards in Italy and I get goosebumps. She, she reaches over me and she rubs my back and she says, I'm so fucking proud of you. She's like, you you showed me. You didn't tell me. And that is what money gets you. That yeah. fucking moment right there. And that's happiness. And that was happiness. That was utter, pure elation. And ha- I mean, I could, I could get emotional if I wanted to about it because it was just. Okay, was- but there's but there's my point. So too many people are out there trying to convince you money doesn't buy happiness. And let me tell you something, folks. It does buy you happiness. Quit freaking believing that shit and figure out how to get some. I've never heard anybody with money bitch about having it it's always the people that don't have it that are trying to convince you not to get any hey money doesn't buy happiness hey money you know that's not going to make you cool fuck yeah it does money makes you fucking cool and and, and again if you're a piece of shit money just makes you a bigger bigger piece piece of shit shit, but at the end of the day folks if you're a good person you're out there working hard you have ethics you want to give you're helping people and you and you've got this subconscious block about money get rid of it the question is, is how do you get rid of it? And, and we have a formula for yeah, it. Yeah, well, that's right the now, formula. Like, right now, like your money is a reflection of the value you place on yourself. The end. Like your money, if you log into your bank account right now, it's a reflection of like the value you place on yourself because it's a standard that you set for yourself. We don't always do what we should, but we always meet our minimum standards. Guaranteed. Can we say that money is the measuring stick for self-worth? It is. It is. And and a lot of people are like, well, the blah, blah, blah. Look at your bank account, kids. If you ain't got as much as you want, it's because you don't value yourself as much as you should. And I'm going to give you a system today to figure out how to value yourself, how to win at the, the game of life, and how to like actually expand on a day-to-day basis. Like Brad and I were talking and, and we have this principle of 90 days, like just putting your head down for 90 days. You could do anything. For 90 days, you can quit drinking, you can quit smoking, you can lose weight. Dude, I've been drunk longer than that. I know. You can damn near do anything. You could do anything for 90 days. And 90 days is short enough to get a formative result. And it's, but it's long, it's, it's long enough to actually move the fucking needle. It takes 28 days to form a new habit. It takes another 28 or 38 days. 30 days to like really start to see the results. And then it takes another 30 days for it to really anchor in and become like, not what you do, but who you are, who you are, not what you do, but who you are. Yeah. And so we focus on this thing called the core four. We basically do it every single day. It's, It's a way to win the daily war. Like we're all going to war in some form of fashion, war against our bills, war against our relationships, war against our boss, war against like our own mind, that man or woman that you're talking about in the mirror. Like that's the person we're at war with. Everybody else is inconsequential. Like it's you versus you. Like that's it. And until I understood that, like I was searching for everything, everywhere from anybody. And I wasn't, I wasn't finding it until I realized that I'm the greatest problem I'll ever have. Therefore, I am the only solution I'll ever have. So 
we wake up in the morning and we call it core four before the door. You like alliteration and, and rhyming. Uh, so you get up and you do the core four before the door. So you focus on being four dimensional, your physical body, your overall being, your balance, which is your relationships and your business, making some freaking money and making it matter. And so you wake up. I don't care what time you wake up. Really, I don't. But wake up a little bit earlier. Like everybody says, I don't have the time. Fuck you. I don't have the time. I've got two businesses, 300 employees, a wife, two children, a charity, like two startups and a coaching business. I need another opportunity like I need a hole in the head. But I got one thing that you have, the same amount of time in the day. Yeah, but if you don't have time, it's an excuse. 100%. And, and, I, and I try to tell people over and over, you can, you can, we're all millionaires, okay? We either have millions of dollars or millions of excuses. So look in, like the, look in the fucking mirror and see which one are you. Because if you don't have millions of dollars, well, then you're the other one. Because we're all millionaires. You're a millionaire right now. You're driving around in your car listening to this. You're a millionaire question is is if you don't have the dollars well then that means there's excuses you got millions of excuses and i don't have time as one of them right i say show me a person that says they don't have time and i'll show you their social media account and i'll see thousands of likes and con consumption of other people's lives i'm like you're spending more time consuming somebody else's life than you are actually figuring out what you want for yours and if you don't have time dude that's another reason that you need to fix your shit because if you don't have time it means you don't value yourself enough yeah. to make the time 100 percent. because it's literally probably a subconscious thing that you're saying well i don't have time when in reality you do but you don't think you're worth it right the scary part is a lot of people don't even consciously know that they hate themselves nope they they walk around with this false bravado yep or this 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 feeling of you know superior superiority or, or the victim mentality you know it's their fault it's their fault it's trump's fault it's this fault that fault i'm like dude like you want to make america great again how about you make your fucking self great again like yeah. just make yourself great like if you make yourself great like other great things will happen and and the core four every day is a formula to do that like you wake up just a little bit earlier i'm not talking two three hours i'm talking 45 minutes to an hour yeah. and that first hour you you research tony robbins any of these guys they call it the hour of power the you know owning the day you know carpe diem like i mean there's this is not like some you know crazy theory this fucking works and it's worked for the test of time so you wake up in the morning 30 45 an hour earlier first thing you do is you focus on your body you got to wake up the body and there's there's workouts that you can do there's one i talked to you about brad called tabata he likes it he thinks it's a bread it's not chabata it's tabata uh and you get up it, it takes all of eight minutes just go on youtube and Type in eight minute Tabata workout. Try that fucker and you tell me how you feel. Like you will be exhausted, but you're going to wake up the body, which is like waking up the soul and it's waking up the mind. After that, you, you feel your body. You know, like some of us have expensive cars. We would never put like bad shit in our cars. They just wouldn't run right. Your body's the same way. We treat our cars better than we treat our bodies. So there's a total of four possible po points in, in every day. For what you do in your body, what you do in your being, what you do in balance, and what you do in business. Each one of those is divided into two categories, and you get a half point for each. So body is fuel and fitness. So did I work out? Did I get my greens in? Yes or no? Half a point each. So when you get your body done, you're at one point. Now you move on to being. Being is simple. Being is the connection between your heart and your mind. Your mind is your greatest asset, and it's also your worst enemy. But your heart, your heart is your greatest ally. It will never, ever lead you astray. You can call it the voice. You can call it God. You can call it intuition. You can call it instinct. There's something inside of you that speaks to you every single day. Your mind often misconstrues that and wants to talk to you negatively. You should have done this. You should have done that. And I say you should have all over to yourself. You're just covered in should have. You know, like just do it. Like stop, stop like just thinking about it and just do it. And so when you, when we, we believe in meditation, so it's not hocus pocus. It's not like tickle me with the feather and rub oil on my nipples. Like it's, it's like just slowing down the mind, like just slowing down the mind. Like just right now, like you can feel the energy drop. When I lower my voice, I focus on my breathing. You can feel the calm that just came over this room. That's all meditation is. Calm is contagious. 
Like when you're calm and your your brain starts to slow down, like new things can enter into it. These all the all the shame and the guilt will start to subside and new possibilities will open up in your mind. So we meditate for 10 to 20 minutes. Sit in gratitude. Sit in intention. What the hell do you want from the day? And then when you come out of it, write that shit down. The greatest scripture you will ever read in your entire life is written from your own pen. The end. Like, you could look at the Bible, you can look at the Quran, you can look at the Book of Mormon. Like, you're consuming somebody else's words. You can do that, but then go and write down your own words and consume that shit. Like, you will have massive revelations. I, I, I went back to a journal I had right around that time. My wife and I um, were having all that problems with money, and she said, I don't want this anymore. I wrote some shit down. I wrote, I live in Newport Beach, California. I have two kids. By the time I'm 37, boom, boom, boom. Like, out of 10 things I wrote down, I was blown the fuck away. Like, nine of them happened. I think the only thing that didn't happen is I said I was going to be a billionaire, and I'm not there yet. That was it. Like the, like the chances of living in Newport Beach and being married to my wife at that time were like, it couldn't have been a farther thing from reality. But because my physical pen wrote it down on paper, it transcribed it in my mind, my actions started to like move towards that result. And then I manifested that result in my mind. Like it's, it's fucking sounds crazy. Try it, test me and prove me wrong. So what are you supposed to be writing down? Just first of all, I, I, this is what I do. You can write down whatever comes to you, but what I do is I write down what I'm grateful for. Like, cause I, I feel like in this world, we're always looking for something we don't have instead of for appreciating, appreciating what we do have. So I just write down what I'm grateful for. Then I write down like some like declarations. I am this, I am that I am a millionaire. I am a, a philanthropist. I am a, what, whatever it is, be very specific and talk in the present tense. I am is the two most empowering or disempowering words in the entire human language i am fat that's disempowering i am fit that's empowering but people focus too much on the disempowering i am statements and they lose sight of what they really want to be so i write down some i am statements and then i write down like this is what i'm going to do today i'm going to do x y and z and it's it's when you go through life with intention like the results are fucking incredible now you've woken up, you've, you've got your body moving, you fueled it, you tapped into your heart, you slowed down your mind, you spent time in gratitude, and then you focused on what you wanted to do for the day. The next thing you need to do before you leave the house is you need to lean in with love to your relationships. It could be your wife, could be your mom, could be your brother, your sister. We all have these important relationships in our life. And love is like a bank. Like you need to deposit money into it in order for it to compound. You cannot go to Chase Bank or Wells Fargo or wherever you bank right now and withdraw more money than you physically put in. Love is the same way. I cannot go ask my wife for more love than I've actually given her. When I was first trying to date her, I would do anything. Like I would send her flowers and all this shit, but somehow I get married and I feel like, okay, cool. I got her. She's mine. No, no. Dick. That's why like 50%, 70% of marriages end in divorce because we stopped doing the shit that we did to get them in the first place. We stopped taking them on date nights. We stopped giving them love. We stopped like having sex with them. And then we wonder why we have an affair or they have an affair. It's like, because you don't even fucking know this person. You know, I I got a little funny antidote. You ever heard of uh, hallway sex? No. All right. So... When you, uh, when you first are like dating, you start having sex, you fucking have sex everywhere. You know, you have sex in the car, you have sex in the bathroom, you have sex in the kitchen counter. Then like, you know, you get, you get engaged. It starts to be more kind of routine. It's like maybe once in a while in the living room, but mostly in the bedroom. Then you get married and then it's like, you know, you just have, you just have it like once every month or you, before you know, it's on your birthday and anniversary. Right. And then you get to hallway sex. That's when you know you're fucked. Hallway sex sounds exciting, but hallway sex is when you're walking past the wife in the hallway and she's walking past you and she goes, fuck you. And you go, fuck you. And you both just fucked each other in the hallway. That's literally what happens in these relationships. You're like, how the fuck did I end up here? Well, it's because you didn't, you didn't like, if you stop working on your business every day, Brad, where are you going to be? In the, in the fucking poor house. Exactly. So, and you will be bankrupt emotionally in your marriage if you don't work on that shit. But we don't think about this. We just go through life with no intention. We walk out the door and we're like, 
woman, be good. I'm going to go conquer the world. And we come back and we expect them to open their legs and open their hearts and like accept us for who we are. It's bullshit. Massages. Like, yeah, massages. You have to fucking work on it. Like your anything, your body, your mind, your relationships and your business, you have to work on it. And the core four is a tool for doing that every day. Well, I told, I tell people, man, when they're bitching about their girls, I always say, bro, it's never the horse. It's always the jockey. Mm-hmm. It's never the horse. When you're bitching about your girl, give her to somebody else and watch all of a sudden you're thinking, well, dude, she never did, did that, that for with me. me. Yeah, like I never, I, well, I didn't know she liked that. Well, that's because. You never invested the time. Exactly. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's always the jockey, man. It's never the horse. Well, you want a different result in life, do something different. Like the end. You know, and so the core four, you've, you've worked out, you've meditated and you wrote some shit down. You sat in peace and gratitude. You're feeling good. Like, you're feeling good at this point, right? I don't care what's happening outside. Then you're like, wow, this is why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for her. I'm doing it for my kids. Like, I got a, a four-year-old and a three-year-old. Like, I'm doing it for them. I'm doing it because be, my daughter will ultimately marry somebody like me. That's fucking scary. So every day I work on being a better version of me, so I'm happy when I finally get it introduced to my son-in-law. My son will learn how to treat women how I treat their mom. And I'll be fucking damned if he's going to treat them like I've treated her in the past. So every day I work on that. It's like, it's not rocket science. So I send a text message, an email, voice note, something. We have this great communication tool. Most of you are listening to this podcast on something called a smartphone. It takes all of 30 seconds to send somebody a po- or a, uh, a daily deposit with my wife this morning. Just like, baby, I love you so much. I've been gone for 24 hours. I can't wait to be back in your arms. Actually, her and I are coming here to Vegas. And I was like, I can't wait to be back here with you and have fun with my girl. My girl. Like, like my girl. My, like, I, I, I can look at her like my wife, but she's my girl, man. And I, I treat her like that. I treat her like we're still dating. And it's fucking crazy. My wife and I are having better sex right now, five years into our marriage, than we were when we were engaged. Mm-hmm. Amen. And she'll come on here and tell you. The linguine noodle is back in action, baby. It's al dente. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so now you're at you're at a, there are three points. You've done your body. You've meditated. Then you then you worked on your relationship, and now it's time to go make some money. It's time to go make some money. And how do you do that? Well, you have to master your craft. Like I guarantee you, your first podcast, Brad, was not as good as I don't even know what episode this is, but it's not as good because you had reps practicing it studying how to be this fucking studio is amazing you know you had to learn how to do all this stuff and so every day you study towards that you study towards that and so you get a half a point for studying something about sales systems marketing whatever and then you declare it you teach it you go out there like i i send emails to my team i i send emails to my wife like i declare something about what i'm gonna do in my business to drive it forward like my businesses were at a fucking standstill. I started applying this formula and in the last three years, over a hundred million dollars have been generated. They've more than quadrupled. And it was just because I didn't stop. I stopped stopping. Most of you stop well short of your goal. Just stop fucking stopping. And guess what? You're going to get better results. Like, and so there's four points possible every single day. You got your body, so did you do your fitness and your fuel? You got your uh, your being. Did you meditate and journal? You got your balance. Did you send text messages, emails, post-it notes, whatever, to your loved ones? And business, did you study something about your business and actually teach it to people that matter and drive your business forward? You get four points in a day, 28 points in a week. I've, I'm not good at math, but how many ever that is in 90 days? You do this every fucking day for 90 days. And come tell me it doesn't work. Come tell me you don't look better. Come tell me you don't feel better. Come tell me you're not having more sex. Come tell me you're not making more money. And I will tell you, you're a fucking liar. You didn't do the work. Mm. Dude, so there's this, I, I own this ranch up in in, um, in Idaho. And so we, we call it chopping wood every single day, right? Like chopping wood, it, it warms you twice. Chopping wood literally warms you twice. You, you chop you chop it, and in the physical act of chopping it, like you, you, it warms you, you sweat, and then you put it in the fire, and it warms you and those around you. 
And yeah. that's and that's what the core four is. There's a guy that lives up on the mountain there. He's a Marine. He spent a lot of time overseas. Uh, he's got PTSD, to- lives completely off the grid. So I've got 88 acres up there and his, his, his property is like adjacent to mine. And this guy literally. 88 like, acres. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Sounds like a preserve. Dude, it's great. You, you, you got to get up there, man. Where's it at? It's in, uh, well, I can't really talk about it. It's in Northern Idaho because I, I don't disclose the location because we do have like celebrities and people come up there that come through the program, but it's in Northern Idaho. I call it Southern Canada. Um, and, but this guy lives off the grid and literally what this guy does all fucking, uh, spring and summer and fall is he chops wood. Like, like, like not like in the metaphorical sense, like literally gets an ax, chops down a fucking tree, chops it down and, and cords wood because he lives off the grid. He's got four girls, four girls, and they live in this one fucking bedroom cabin. If this guy stops chopping wood, if he takes a vacation in the summer or he doesn't chop enough wood in the spring, his family fucking dies. Like not in a metaphorical sense, in a literal sense, they will freeze to death if he doesn't chop wood. And I'm like, shouldn't we all be so fucking lucky to have that as over our head? But the, here's the reality is we do. If we don't get up and grow every day, our fucking family dies. Our body dies. Our bank account dies. But because we live in this modern world and we're not living off the grid like this guy, we don't feel it. I take all my coaching clients to this guy's house and, and we literally sit there and watch this motherfucker chop wood. I'm like... You guys, your relationship's dead because you stopped chopping wood. Your body is 100 pounds overweight because you stopped chopping wood. Your bank account is empty because you stopped chopping wood. We should all be so lucky that our family is going to fucking die if we don't produce. Then it'd be easy. It's easy to recognize. Simple but not easy. Yeah, well, I mean, it's easy to recognize when there's that big of a of a consequence there's people i always say listen when it, what it boils down to is choices yeah the, the choices you make like even these core four i can choose not to right well then it was a choice or i could choose two well then it was a choice i always say man you can't get rich making poor choices <laughs> i love that at the end of the day it all boils down to choices man what did you eat what did you say what did you do if someone can just master making great choices they will have a much better life. If you look at someone in prison, you they know, sitting there choices. wondering what got me here and maybe that's a good person. And they're thinking, what did I do? And you start looking back and you trace it all the way back to what they actually did. They made a bad choice. Yeah. They, they, they were in a fight with their girl. So they decided to go to the bar and then they decided to get two drinks too many. Then they decided to drive. Then they decided to fricking run. Then they decided to fricking fight, you know, whatever. And at the end of the day, they're sitting in a fucking prison cell going, what did I do? How, why me? Why me victim? Right. Dude, you made a stupid choice. Yeah. You, you, your, your girl didn't like you probably cause you were making bad choices. Yep. You weren't fucking doing the core four. You weren't investing. You weren't depositing right. love. And you, if you were depositing love, it was in the wrong person. Right. Literally. And yeah, exactly. And most people these days like live in a metaphorical prison. Sure. Like they, they live in their own prison cell, but guess what? They were the architect. They were the, 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 uh, the construction beh- behind it. And they're also the fucking warden and they're sitting there and they got the keys in their hand. And I'm like, dude, reach over unlock it and get out of your prison they're like but i can't i'm like they're not allowed that you have the keys they don't they're not allowed and they don't deserve it they've been told all their life this shit and that's a story it's a story that someone else told you by the way like if you're sitting there listening to your mind because a lot of people talk to themselves Mm -hmm. like I, i mean everyone has an inner voice and if you really listen closely to that inner voice you'll you'll determine if it's actually you or not because a lot of times people will hear a voice that says like fucking you, you, you can't do that or, you know, you're not going to actually stick to this or right. you're not going to actually, you know, make the difference. If someone's saying you, you wouldn't talk to yourself that way. Mm. You would say I. And if you really listen to that voice, most times it's somebody saying you're not good enough. You're not going to make it. You should quit. You are you don't deserve this. Right. Well, that's somebody else talking to you, bro. That's fucking the past stuck in your head on replay yep and if you just realize that listen 
you're when you say you've built the wall a lot of people would say no you know this not not in this case man this guy's dad was an asshole this guy's dad didn't love him they put cigarettes out on him you know this guy's tough man he had to go through some serious shit or you know this this girl was abused as a child and man you don't understand listen at the end of the day you have the ability regardless of what happened to you in the past to design your own future. And if you allow your past to cage you in, it's you allowing it to happen. And that's why, you know, there is, there is no excuse. Nobody can sit back and say, well, in this case, you didn't build your own prison. Yes, you did because only you can allow someone to affect you emotionally, right? Maybe not physically. I could walk over there and punch you in your face. You can't stop that. But how do you react right. and what do you think about it and, and what's going on five, five weeks from now Sure, that you can't allow you, well, you may not allow, you may not control everything in the world, but you do control yourself and how you react to those things. And that's the main difference I think between, you know, successful and, and failure. A hundred percent. And there's like, if you look around, there's, there's, we're all broken in some, some way, like our parents all fucked up in some way. Like, life happened to us like nobody has the peaches and cream right but it's like you said it's what you decide to do with it yeah like we have we have the freedom of choice never the freedom of consequence that's what i tell my children all the time and so like you have to look at like your circumstances and make some choices you know like you like you said you're not going to get rich making poor choices and that that includes across all areas like you're not going to get rich in your body you're not going to rich in your bank account you're not going to get rich in like your love for yourself uh, and you're not going to get rich in your relationships if you make poor fucking choices. Like you have a choice. Listening to this podcast right now is a choice. It's a positive choice. What you do with it after won't be up to Brad and I. It'll be up to you. Like I know where I'm headed. I know where I'm going. Now, now is it possible to do these core four for 90 days and be in a worse situation? I think it's physically impossible unless like, fuck, I got a, I got a friend. He, um, he, he got stage four cancer. Uh, invested into his business three days or two days before Christmas, 42 years old. He got stage four cancer. This is the only fucking thing that kept this guy alive. Like was this, was this pattern uh, of doing the warrior's way putting, you can go listen. I have a podcast with him. His name is Gary Heyer. It's, What's your podcast? It's the next 90 with Nick. So you can just type in the next 90 and I call it the next 90 cause we're always focused on the next 90 and becoming this new evolution of ourselves. So this guy went through chemo. He went through, I mean, dude, just, four hundred thousand dollars of medical bills if i brought him on here right now he'd say i'm in a better spot because i chose to like continue to move forward when all the chips were against me all the bets were uh, he's like i couldn't control that but i could control this and that's what i did and now the guy is cancer free um i mean he's on a colostomy bag and he like he said he'll tell you right now cancer is the best thing that ever happened to him because it woke his ass up yeah. A lot, a lot of times people wait for that type of like serious traumatic event right. to wake up. And cancer exists in all of us right now, whether it's the physical, actual manifestation of cancer or cancer of the mind and cancer of our stories and cancerous relationships and cancerous workout habits and can't like you can. This is a daily dose of fucking chemo to yeah. remove all that cancer from your life. And you're like, you're going to make these micro um, gross every single day and you're going to look back and you're going to have a huge macro result. And as a result, you're going to love yourself more. You're going to be a little bit lighter physically and emotionally. Your bank account is going to be a little bit higher, which I mean, it's like rings. You, of, you would hope because there may be a, some shit you did a year ago that's going to sneak up and cap, but you'll, but capture you'll, you. But you'll be equipped to handle it. Well, you just keep going. Exactly. Keep chopping wood, man. Keep, keep chopping, chopping wood. Because that's what a lot of people do is they're, you know, they might think, hey, you know, I'll do this program. And then, you know, 60 days later, they got less in the bank account than when they started. Oh, yeah. And f they're going to blame. And they're going to you I'll, know play I'll, victim. I'll tell you right yeah, now. This shit doesn't work. Well, dude, you didn't do it long enough. And you didn't factor in the fact that you were fucking someone six months ago. And it <laughs> snuck up and stung you right during this little cycle right so just keep going, going. keep chopping wood yeah because you can't fail when you constantly progress forward mm -hmm. it may take you six years when you wanted to do it in six months but guess what if you move forward there you'll be yep i, I mean, mean i'm gonna bomb that one yeah, go ahead. at the end of the day that's the facts if you move forward 
there you'll be. Yep. It's impossible to move forward and find yourself behind. Uh, exactly. I mean, you and I are talking. It's like, where do you where do you spend time driving the car? Looking in the rear view or looking out the windshield? windshield? Looking out the wheelchair. But so many of us in our life, you look if you look at just the physical size, the rear view mirror versus the windshield, like it's an analogy for life. You need to spend about that much time looking in your past just to be aware of what was behind you, potholes, dangers, someone coming up from behind you. But you're going to focus the majority of your time looking at the windshield because if you don't, you're going to fucking crash. Dude, I don't even look in my rearview mirror to see what what happened. <laughs> well, they look, I look they in look my like... rearview mirror to see what who's who's catching me. Right. Like if I look in the rearview mirror at all, it's to see who's coming up I, behind me. Because you know I, I wanna I wanna win. You know what I look in the rearview mirror for? To look right back in my eyes and say, Go, motherfucker. Yeah. Like that's what I that's what I look at when I look in the rearview mirror. I look, I go, Okay, cool. Go. Yeah. Look, I, go. I, I, when I you know, if I'm looking in the rearview mirror, it's usually to see who's coming up on me. It's not to see where, what, 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 what's behind me. Mm-hmm. People don't, you know, and that's another thing. People don't understand how to live in the present because like nobody stops and contemplates the magnitude of the present. Like yeah. the present, like when I said present, it was no longer the present. The second you finish the word present, it's in the past. Right. So the the present, like now, is is always changing, and you'll never catch it. So if you just try to get living in the now, you're always living like right in the second. And yeah. if you can do that, man, I'm telling you, well, you'll be successful no matter what. The problem is, is it's hard to do. So the the past is gone. The future is not guaranteed. It's called the present because it's a gift. Yeah. Well, it's hard to get in that zone. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, you look at the future. In, and and you and you make plans, and then you look in the past, and you regret, and you and you and you worry, and you freaking, you know. At the end of the day, dude, if you can get rid of the past, and you stay stuck, and you and you get rid of the future, even, and yep. just live in the now, dude. I'm telling you right now, you're guaranteed success if you can live right now. Well, you got you've got that you've got that lake out in front of this office. Show which, do, which, which is beautiful, and it's got those fountains in it, right? Yep. And those fountains are there not not for beauty. Those fountains are there for one purpose: to keep that water turning. Well, let me tell you something. By the way, those fountains. If you read my handbook here, it starts out with sup. Then it says we're surrounded by marble and glass with views of of the strip, and water fountains that are there without permission. We fly in the face of conventional wisdom. We are lucky, and now so are you. But the reason I say that those fountains are there without permission is because the developer of this property was a freaking problem solver. And he was told that he cannot have those water features, could not have them. He wanted to build the fountains, could not have them. So basically what he did is he turned the aerators upside down. So if you go out there and look, those aren't even fountains. Those are aerators upside down to make look like fountains. Uh crazy See, isn't it? and you know what it keeps that water moving does because if it's if that water doesn't move it grows stagnant it grows moldy diseased and everything in the ecosystem dies human beings are the same way we don't keep moving forward we don't keep chopping wood like things grow stagnant they grow moldy diseased and die whether it's our body our mind our relationships our bank account the end not to mention he wasn't even allowed to have that lake there <laughs> so you know what he did he built a line over to the golf course and that's the the water ah. that that cycles through the golf course. So again, I mean, he just found ways way, to make, make it, it happen. happen. I have a I have a little saying called "whift," W I F T. Whatever it fucking takes. Yeah. How, how are you gonna get that done? Whift. How are you gonna get that done? Whift. Chop wood and whift. Chop wood and whift. And like just every single day, you know, it took you twenty years to become an overnight success, but everybody wants to see the Bradley now. And not only that, I don't think I'm a success. That's what's crazy is people are like, come on, dude, stop acting like you're humble. I'm like, dude, I'm far from humble. I'm just not where I want to be. Not anywhere, anywhere close. But like you if, will, if but, you weigh a thousand wa- pounds and you lost 80, days. Yeah. dude, 80 pounds is a lot to lose, but not when you're a thousand pounds. Right. You got a long way to go. Right. So that's the only reason I say it. Yeah, I'm, I've done well. Um, I do well. I've built something pretty substantial, but compared to where I'm going, shit, dude, I haven't done shit. That's right. why people say, Hey, can you mentor me? I say, no, I don't, I'm not going to mentor you until I've attained a level in which I'm, you know, proud of or, or 
Like, dude, I just got a lot to fucking learn. I'm not going to try and go mentor this person when sure. I haven't even reached where I need to be. Give me two or three years. I'll probably start mentoring a few folks. 90 days at a time. Yeah, well, that'll be damn sure. Matter of fact, you know how I'm going to mentor people from between now and then? I'm just going to tell them to go go to own the, the next, next 90.com. 90. Com. Yeah, because this shit works. Everything you're talking about, I guarantee will work. Yeah. I can guarantee it if someone has the fortitude to stick with it and doesn't make a bunch of damn excuses. Yep. Dude, that there is a freaking hey, game changer. practice the core four every day for a week. Just try it for a week and see if you are well, if you don't feel better. What was that journal you had? Uh, that's the, my, my war map. So that's uh, it's on Amazon. You can type in Next90. Um, it's still work in progress, people. Like um, I believe I'm a work in progress, so the book is not 100% done. But I chase progress, not perfection. So I launched it kind of in, in, in its infancy. So you can go on Amazon, type in Next90 War Map or the Next90 with Nick. It should pop up. There's a book on Amazon, and it, it's just a 90-day challenge. It's literally doing your core four every day, at the end of the week assessing where you're at, setting targets, and going. Like we have a thing called the Gap Map. And the thing is you just have to be factual. Like I was talking about my wife and like I was living a lie. Like once I started being radically honest, like everything started changing for me. Like we live in a world of liars. Like I am a fucking liar to this day. Like, you know, we, we stretch things. We have like over exaggerations. Like, but if you just go through the facts and you remove the feelings, you can actually start to unwind like where you are. Fact, you weigh, well, I'm a little bit plump. No motherfucker, you are 30 pounds overweight. Like, ah, yeah. uh, well, I'm, I'm doing okay financially. You're barely fucking making it. You know, uh, you know, my, my wife loves me. No, she's on the brink of leaving you. It's like you get factual about it. Like I weigh this much. I have this much in my bank account. This is what I eat. This is what I do with my wife. This is how many times I'm having sex. Like put the facts down on, on that site. Own the next 90.com. There's a gap map and go through the exercise and it'll expose exactly where you are, where you want to be and what's standing in the way. And spoiler alert, that man or woman in the mirror is the only thing standing in your way which is crazy yes isn't that the crazy part crazy it's crazy it's even crazy for me brad because like there's times where like i forget this shit you know it's just i it's just who i am now and like sometimes i'll be like why is my life working i'm like oh fuck i didn't do the core four today you know and it's and then i just go back to basics back what about to basics. what about like if you're on vacation you're out in core, greece core, hanging with the fam core, bam you're core, out in italy touring the the vineyards core four man Every day. Four. every day, 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 sometimes no vacation, some, no, there's no days off, man. The only day off you get is when you're eight feet under and no one wants to fucking have that day. Yeah. So well, I wouldn't mind that <laughs> eight feet under. Yeah. You won't die. I don't want to, but I wouldn't mind. Well, because you've done the work. Well, not only that, but I mean, isn't, isn't what's next supposed to be the, the fucking greatest? I don't know. I'll tell I mean, you. do you believe in heaven? I do. Okay. Well Actually, then, so it, it, haven't you heard heaven's better than here? So you know what I believe in? I believe in this, this law of eternity. And, um, like, I think as long as my name is spoken on this earth, I live in, I live on forever. Right. That's why I do my podcast. That's why I try to influence and change people's lives. Cause I want people talking about Nick Long. Like they talk about George fucking Washington. Like George Washington lives right now because I just spoke his name, you know, and that's what I believe. I don't know what happens when we die. I'm a Christian. I like to believe we go to heaven, but the only guy that's been back is Jesus Christ. And I can't talk to that guy except for when I close my eyes and pray. So I live like there is one, but I also live like I want to live on forever. And by doing that, I have to make a fucking impact. And by doing that, I have to like be me every single day. Put your own oxygen mask on first, folks. First, save yourselves. Now, folks, there's a lot of people out there in the world that need to hear this. So tag somebody, tag them if you love them, make your love deposit by sharing this out with people. How about that? Yes, exactly. Go, go make your love deposit for Today. old BL, right? By going to iTunes and freaking rate the <laughs> podcast and freaking subscribe and share it out with people. Share, share it out, people. Like this is men like this are the ones that are like bold enough to put themselves out there to change the world. Like you don't open your voice. People don't hear this conversation. Garen fucking T, there's somebody in a really dark spot right now listening to this. And between you and me, like this is a pathway for them out. Like you're not bold enough to open your mouth and share. They're not having this. They're not having this revelation. So the least they can do is go like show some love back. The law of reciprocity, like subscribe 
and review. This on bitch right here, I could have charged three ninety nine for. Exactly. You just, you just gave a formula for guaranteed success. Everybody listening on the Bomb Squad, go check this dude out at Nick Long three sixty five, or go to Own the Next ninety with a nine zero. Yep, nine zero. Download the Gap Map dot com. Get go, the fucking work. Go get the Gap Map, and then go to Amazon and and get the book War Map. What's it called? It's called the Next ninety War Map. Go get the warm app, dude. Try it out for 90 days. If you can't do it for 90 days, unsubscribe. Stop being a freaking whining bitch <laughs> and go look in the mirror because that's the only person stopping you. I'm just trying to get you the information. My my vision and mission here is I want to live in a world that's more successful. Yep. I want to make it to where everybody pretty much succeeds that wants to. Yep. And I believe that the only reason people aren't succeeding is because they don't have the right knowledge. They don't know how. There's businesses going out because they don't know how to close a deal. There's freaking relationships failing because they don't know how to make love deposits. Right. There's shit going wrong all over the planet, especially now with this fucked up culture we got. Absolutely. Shootings and this shit. Why? Because someone didn't know how to be kind. Someone didn't know how to identify somebody losing their mind. Somebody didn't know how to coach and mentor the the kid that shot up the school whatever the case is if we want to live in a world more successful we got to get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it and that's all i'm doing every day folks yes help a brother out and share yes. a motherfucking podcast and when people say oh he uses cuss words those aren't cuss words dude those are made up meanings the word fuck f-u-c-k was actually permission granted by the king to have children it stands for fornication under consent of the king boom and we made up the word fuck so guess what i use it with all the love in the world and quite frankly i even have a clean version coming out to where i don't say a cuss word it'll be out never wary third until then subscribe to this one (laughs) peace out yeah (laughs) i didn't know that about the word fuck